This is video number one from digital-university.org. We're going to be discussing uh, various topics in quantum mechanics. In this video, we want to establish why this is considered the identity operator, where the B's, if you will, these are an orthonormal set of basis vectors. And you see we're using um, just standard bracket notation as we will uh, in all of our videos. So if these are not just basis vectors but an orthonormal set of basis vectors so that the inner product of two of them either equals zero or 1, depending upon whether if i equals k, so they have, we're taking the inner product of the same vector, then it's 1. If i does not equal k, so we're taking the inner product of two different vectors, then it's 0. So these are orthonormal set of vectors. And the other way of um, designating this relationship is just to use the Kronecker delta symbol. And this equals 1 when i equals k, and it equals 0 when i does not equal k. So let's just take a general ket vector. Let's take a general ket vector v. And we can expand it out now in terms of these basis vectors. It will have some coefficient, call it v1 times the first basis vector, plus another coefficient times the second basis vector, and so forth like this. It doesn't have to stop at n. It might even be an infinite dimensional space. And these coefficients, if we're in quantum mechanics, most likely will be uh, complex numbers. Or we can simply write this more succinctly as say the sum over i of the i like this. Okay, now let's ask ourselves this question. What happens if we take one of these basis vectors, use that basis vector to form an inner product with our vector? Say we use um, B3. So now we have B3, make more room here, this, that will equal our vector B3, the inner product, with this side. So we're going to have like this. And we just continue along. Say like this. OK. Here then we're going to take the inner product of B3 with B1. But that's 0. So you don't get any contribution from here. Take the inner product of B3 with B2, that's 0, so you don't get any contribution from here. Take the inner product of B3 with B3, we get 1 times V3, so 
Well, so far this equals V3. And then the rest of them will obviously also be 0 because they're not the basis vector B3. These are all orthonormal. So what we have here is this expression So what this is telling us is here we're taking the ket vector and expanding it in terms of these basis vectors and we said we have these various coefficients each coefficient being different being multiplied by a different basis vector how can we determine what those coefficients are? Well if we want to know what this one is then just take the inner product of that basis vector with V and that will tell us what V2 is. So we can say in general Oh, this is VI. We have this relationship then that to find any particular coefficient, take that corresponding basis vector and take the inner product of it with the vector V. Okay, hopefully that makes sense then. Now, let's go back. What we have here is this expression. So, let's make some room and write this down here. We're saying that V equals the sum over I and here this is a coefficient probably a complex number multiplied by this basis vector. So let's write it like this. The basis vector VI and multiplied by a complex coefficient VI. But what is VI equal to? It's equal to this. So we can substitute this for the VI expression here. So let's do that. And that's what we have. So here we have the ket vector V equals this along with cap vector V. So what you will see if you look in the textbooks that they will just say, well, when you have these here nose to nose like this, so to speak, summed over some variable, then this, they will either say it is 1 or the identity operator. So that in a nutshell then is how that is derived. So we go back to here, we'll just say just simply the identity operator. So in the next video when we're talking about how to represent operators as matrices we're going to make use of this relationship here. So we just wanted to take this video here and very quickly establish the validity of why this is true because actually we'll use it considerably later on in the future videos. But okay, that's it for this video. Um, come back, join us for the next video, and we're going to talk about how to represent operators in terms of matrices. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion.